It's the time for the package from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So on this channel, I've reviewed so many of these clone system, especially the NES clones. They have made so many of these freaking things. But this time we're going to get something different. Yeah, because this is a five in one system uh, that can play basically everything. And with everything, I mean NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, not PlayStation, it's more like MAME Arcade. So nevertheless, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Built in thousand games and that is what we call freaking naughty. But it is saying it has freaking AV out. Yeah, seriously. After all those things and HDMI versions, now we're going to get an AV out. Oh. Okay, so here we're having the AV out cable. It has stereo, or it has at least the connection for stereo. Old school controllers, but first. Ugh. Man, these smell chemical. Okay, what you're going to get are the turbo buttons. So, okay, we're having Super NES by only having four buttons. That doesn't make any freaking sense. For arcade, okay, but not all the arcade games. So what a very odd way of making a system like this. All right, so what kind of power supply are we going to get? <laughs> this is really bad and very cheap. Five volts, 1000 milliamp, and the connection itself is a micro USB, so basically you can use everything like a normal power supply the system itself it's indeed the basic entertainment system from our friends from china and here we have the the f card and brandless or oh, four gigabytes so i think there will not be a lot of stuff on there okay that's it and of course ooh, the deluxe toilet paper metal i like those and let's see what we're gonna do oh it's an explanation about the system 1001 use method or in other words how do you hey how can you use it? Can you see? We can quick load, quick save. So do are quite interesting. Whatever. Let's go. Let's connect it to this bloody thing. So guys, we're going old school today. Yeah. We're going to connect it like this. And let's see how the display quality is. I think it's going to be pretty shitty. Let's grab ourselves the fake system here. Let's put it in and let's have some fun. All right, so let's power it on and let's see what's going to happen, people. Nothing is going to happen because I got it on the wrong signal. Ah! Oh boy, this is really bad. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a lot of interruption here on the display itself. It's really bad. It's really horrible. Okay, let's see if we can fix it up. Sometimes you're just going to grab a different cable. Okay, so still getting the same result. Okay, I'm going to swap out the cable with one I'm living around because this is just freaking awful. Oh man, I did change it out the cable, but it doesn't matter. The signal of the system itself is just that poor. And we can see it, but nevertheless, let's take a close look at the menu. Because the menu itself is exactly the same as the things that I've reviewed back in the day, like the cheap handhelds. So I'm guessing it will be the same results. Okay, here we're having the thumbnails. We can not, yeah, we can scroll through them, but there are only four of them. Going down, we're having NES, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, Game Boy Advance, and MAME. Let's go to the settings, product information version 1.2 uh, factory outputs maybe we can change it out like this that it will get better oh, oh slightly better slightly better okay the resolution is way better now okay let's take a close look at some games and let's see how they are running i didn't lie about one thing when you're pressing the reset button as you can see we're having now a menu where we can do a quick load and quick save so let's jump off let's be set it back Okay, let's load. And as you can see, it seems to be working fine. Oh man, I can tell you the defect of this thing is so freaking horrible. The emulation itself of the NES games is not bad at all. It's such a shame that the display or the image quality is that poor. Why didn't they go for a decent HMI connection? I pressed the wrong button, damn it. Is it me or is this emulation just so freaking choppy? So yeah guys, so you can only play these games with a freaking 8-bit controller that has 4 buttons. 
Yeah, I guess again, if you want to play stick button games, you're just having a problem. Yep. Oh boy, this sounds not great. It looks awful. I don't know what's going on, but I can't do anything. I cannot even the freaking start of the game. What the hell? Oh. What a pointless machine. Alright, so I find a game that finally freaking works. Now, I think when you think of this boss, bam, this road really did look really choppy. And Wow, and a big chunk delay. The Super NES is just really shitty. Alright, so let's try this again. Let's run. Round one. Fight. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I have four punch buttons and no kick buttons. That makes sense. I can even do this move. What the hell is going on? Let's see. Okay. So because of this game is only supporting two buttons, you can play it, but for this horrible D-pad, it plays not bad. The same goes for the other game. But yeah, let's be honest, this is running really shopping. Alright, so here we have the NES clone that can play it all, but the question remains, what's inside? So that's what we're going to do. It is tear down time. Okay, I think I'm going to need to remove the feet over here. I'm going to grab myself some tools because damn, these are freaking sticky. And uh, let's see what's inside this bad boy. All right, so let's take a close look inside. So these things are very easy to put together and very easy to tear down. The only thing that we need to do is we're moving the four parkers over here, and we can just pop it open. Oh boy, so this thing looks quite different. Um, the reason why I'm saying is normally we're having a PCB that goes here up front for the connections and the cables, and here we're having the PCB of so course. But it's slightly different indeed. And here you can see it has a chip called GB1. It doesn't say anything with me, but maybe there's somebody out there who knows what kind of PCB it is. So another thing that is really concerning, look at this, how they made this. Look at this. What a kind of engineering is this? So basically they bent the PCB board and <laughs> tried to fit it in the case. Uh, I think do with this black bob or something, or this is too long, but come on, this is something you can't do with a PCB. Okay, so let's do a quick overview. As you can see over here, we're having the GB chip, one chip over here. And let's say the date itself is the GBX63 version number one. It has made this year the third of the 11th, so in other words, it's built in March. So this device is completely new if you compare it in the NES Mini clone system invasion. All right, so we can say many things about this device itself. So the direction they are going, it's something new, but in many ways, yeah, you know why I'm thinking of it and I know what you think of it. It comes with a controller. I don't know what you need to do with it, but I think there's only one thing I can do. That's what we call a waste of everything. 